This article was written by Nani Pelkhivala and published in the Indian Express in 1994. He raised the issues regarding the declining health of the earth. Let's begin. One cannot recall any movement in world history which has gripped the imagination of the entire humanity so rapidly as the Green Movement. In 1972, the world's first nationwide Green Party was founded in New Zealand. Since then, the movement has not looked back. Thus, it was founded about 25 years before this article. We have shifted from the mechanistic view to a holistic view of the world. Now what does this mean? Mechanistic view means that we see the world the natural processes, as a machine working. On the other hand, the holistic and ecological view means, we understand the importance of nature, and its resources, for the future needs. We have shifted from a mechanistic view, to a holistic and ecological view of the world. It is a shift in human perceptions, as revolutionary as that introduced by Copernicus, who told us, that the Earth and other planets, revolve around the Sun. For the first time in history, there is a growing worldwide thinking, that the Earth is a living organism, a large being, of which we are parts. It has its own needs, and vital processes, which need to be respected and preserved. The Earth's vital signs, like sea level, temperature, concentration of CO2 in air, reveals that the Earth is like a patient in declining health. We have begun to realize our duties to be the guardians of the planet and the trustees of the legacy to future generations. The concept of Sustainable development was popularized in 1987 by the World Commission on Environment and Development. In its report, it defined sustainable development as the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Means, it is a development that meets the present needs without degrading the resources that the future generations would need. In the zoo at Lusaka, Zambia, there is a cage where the notice reads, the world's most dangerous animal. Inside the cage, there is no animal, but a mirror, where you see, yourself. Thanks to a number of agencies, for their efforts, for spreading awareness, about the most dangerous animal in the world, the human. Scientists have registered, about 1.4 million living species, with which mankind shares the earth. But there are 3 to 100 million other, unlisted, living species, still languishing, in the ignominious darkness. Means, there are about 3 to 100 million species, undiscovered by the scientists. The Brand Commission, raised the question. This commission had an Indian member. The first Brand report raised the question, are we to leave our successors, a scorched planet, of advancing deserts, impoverished landscapes, and ailing environment? Means, are we going to leave our future generations, a burnt planet, of deserts, poor landscapes, and sick environment? Mr. L. R. Brown, in his book, The Global Economic Prospect, points out that the Earth's biological systems are forests, fisheries, grasslands, and croplands. These biological systems form the foundation of the global economic system. Not only they provide food, they also provide all the raw materials for industry, except minerals, and petroleum-derived raw materials. But in many areas of the world, human claims on these systems, are reaching an unsustainable level. A level, where their productivity is being impaired. When this happens, fisheries collapse, forests disappear, grasslands convert into barren lands, and croplands deteriorate. In such a protein-conscious, and protein-hungry world, overfishing is common. In poor countries, local forests are being destroyed, in order to get firewood, for cooking. In some places, firewood has become so expensive, that what goes under the pot, costs more than what goes inside it. Since, in the words of Dr. Myers, the tropical forest is, the powerhouse of evolution, so, their destruction leads to, extinction of several animal species. It has been well said that, forests precede mankind and deserts follow. Means, before mankind, were forests, and after mankind, are deserts. The tropical forests, are now eroding at the rate of, 40 to 50 million acres, per year. James Speth, the president of World Resources Institute, said, We were saying, 
that we are losing the forests, one acre per second. But now, it's much closer to an acre and a half per second. Article 48A of the Constitution of India provides that the state shall try hard to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country. But the painful fact is that laws are never respected nor enforced in India. For example, the Constitution says that casteism, untouchability, and forced labor shall be abolished, but they flourish shamelessly even many years of the operation of the Constitution. A report of Parliament's Estimates Committee has highlighted the depletion of India's forests over the last four decades. India is losing forests at the rate of 3.7 million acres per year. Large areas, which are officially designated as forest land, are in fact already treeless. The actual loss of forests is about eight times the rate indicated by government statistics. A three-year study using satellites and aerial photography conducted by the United Nations warns that the climate has gone so bad that it is critical in many of the idiot countries which were investigated. There's no doubt that the growth of world population is one of the strongest factors distorting the future of human society. It took us more than a million years to reach the first billion. One billion was the population of the world around 1800. By the year 1900, a second billion was added and the 20th century added 3.7 billion. The present world population is estimated at 5.7 billion. 5.7 billion is the population at the year of the article 1994. Every four days, the population increases by 1 million. But as income rises, education spreads, and the health improves, it leads to low fertility rate. Fertility rate is the number of children born per woman. Thus, development is the best way to put the world population under control. But development itself is not possible if the present increase in numbers continue. The rich gets richer, and the poor bring children, which limits them to remain poor. More children doesn't mean more workers. More children means more people without work. The population of India is estimated to be 920 million. Around 1994, this is more than the population of Africa and South America put together. The hope of the people will die in their hungry homes unless population control is given priority. For the first time in human history, we are seeing a transcending concern. That is, we are not only concerned about our survival, but the survival of the planet. We have begun to take a holistic view of the basis of our existence. The environmental problem doesn't necessarily signal our demise. It is the passport of our future. What does this mean? It is not necessary that the environmental problems that we are facing are indicating our destruction. In fact, these problems motivate us to solve them and thus provide a better world to our successors. Thus, the problem is a passport for the future. The holistic view, the ecological view, seeing the world as a whole is a new world vision that has begun in this era of responsibility. Industry has a crucial role to play in this new era of responsibility. Because its transformation to an eco-friendly industry will make things right. The chairman of DuPont, Mr. Edgar Willard, declared himself as his company's chief environmental officer. He says, our existence as a leading manufacturer requires that we've to be good in environmental performance. The former British Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, has made many statements during the years of her prime ministership. A popular one is, no generation has a freehold on this earth. All we have is a life tendency with a full repairing lease. Means, no generation is the owner of the earth. We are only living on rent on this earth and we have to repair it for next generation. Mr. Lester R. Brown says. Lester R. Brown? Yes. The writer of the book, The Global Economic Prospect. He says. We have not inherited the earth from our forefathers. We have borrowed it from our children. <laughs>